So now that we've analyzed some simple truss structures, let's look at what some look like in the real world. So the idea of using trusses for bridges has been around quite a long time. So this is the oldest known surviving truss bridge that dates back to the 14th century. Still stands today in Switzerland, and it was built out of wood or timbers. Now maybe more familiar looking is this particular bridge which dates back to the early 1800s. So in the early 1800s or late 1700s, it became uh, possible to build bridges out of iron. And this opened up a whole new kind of forms and different designs that were possible. So Thomas Telford, who built this bridge, was a renowned architect who really was one of the pioneers of in introducing new kinds of structures uh, using iron as a bridge. And so here we see the familiar triangles of the truss, uh, both within this arch structure and within the space between the arch and the deck. Um, these kind of designs opened up all kinds of new possibilities and new ways of thinking. So here's a bridge in Portugal that was built by Eiffel. Yes, the same Eiffel who built the renowned uh, truss tower that is, uh, you probably recognize. Uh, throughout the US, you can find lots of simple railway truss bridges like this one here. Uh, this ought to look quite familiar and looks pretty much exactly like the times, types of simple structures that you have already analyzed. We can find longer structures that have uh, the same types of forms that we've analyzed as well. Uh, so this one in Kentucky, uh, we see the long deck here and just the simple up-down triangular structure uh, exactly as we have analyzed them. The idea of combining elements of the truss with other types of things that we've already studied is also pretty common. So here we see this nice arch structure. We see the supports going down to the deck, so much like the suspension bridge, but rather than a cable, we have this inverted arch where the arch is built out of truss elements. Similar as this bridge in Japan, we see kind of a familiar form here, right? This looks quite, quite a bit like the suspension bridge, except there's no cables. This is all truss elements in the familiar triangular form. This is a famous bridge in Australia, so the Sydney Harbor Bridge. Again, combining the elements of the arch, the truss, and the suspension cables holding up the deck. Now, in all our diagrams, we talk about the truss being held together by pin joints. Uh, when we look under real bridges, we see that might not quite be true. Uh, we see different plates here with things bolted or welded together, and we see lots of different sub-truss sub elements. So look at this structure here, where these elements appear to be just attached rigidly uh, to the beam. So not quite the idealization of the pin joint that we've discussed, but the analysis is quite good because still the forces have to be directed along these members. If they're not, there would be a lot of twisting and buckling and failure that could happen at these plates. Speaking of failure, this is a common way to connect uh, truss elements called a gusset plate. You can see it's just riveted to these uh, elements coming together. This image is from the I-35 bridge in Minneapolis, which actually undergoed a very catastrophic collapse in 2007, which was quite uh, devastating. And the failure of the bridge was actually due to the failure uh, in the gusset plate that holds these elements together. So the connections in bridges are quite uh, vital. Uh, sometimes the idealizations that we talk about though hold true. So this is underneath the Sydney Harbor Bridge and here we see kind of a massive pin joint, right? So you can see this person walking by uh, to get a sense of the scale of this pin joint. And often when we draw bridges on our free body diagrams, we draw little rolly elements at the end, uh, which actually, if you look carefully under bridges, you can often find. So this support allows the bridge to slide back and forth a little bit uh, in this direction while supporting the weight of the structure. Now, the idea of using trusses for homes is definitely and buildings is uh, definitely very old. So this is a drawing from the uh, fourth century of old St. Peter's Basilica, where you can see the familiar looking roof truss up here. Now, the idea of the roof truss dates back um, many, many years, even before this. So um, it's not clear uh, to me anyway when the earliest known structure is, but maybe uh, 2000 BC. If you look at modern homes, we still see uh, all the same elements uh, that have been around for a long time in terms of roof trusses. Some of the more beautiful examples are these timber framed houses, uh, which you can find some great pictures on uh, the internet. You can see here everything is made of timber and joined together. So again, there's no pin joints, um, but our idealization of loads need to being directed along the axis of these timbers. Uh, it still turns out to be a quite good one. Here's just another image showing uh, a joint here where they're using a plate 
uh, both to hold things together, but also probably uh, somewhat decorative as well. If you look at many uh, modern buildings, there's lots of often beautiful timber uh, truss structures up in the ceiling, such as this arched one, which is called a bowstring truss. We'll find trusses in many other buildings. So this is a building at Cornell University. Uh, it was uh, retrofitted to this older building here. It cantilevers over the edge because you can see the people walking here. Uh, and if we look closely, we see the familiar triangular structure of the truss uh, right here, which is holding this cantilevered uh, element up much like a bridge. And one doesn't even have to be so fancy. Um, most large uh, grocery stores or big stores like a Walmart, if you look up in the ceiling, uh, you'll often see these kind of steel framed elements, uh, which ought to look at this point uh, quite familiar. So you see these kind of uh, structures everywhere. Uh, just look up in the ceiling the next time you're in a large store, and it's very likely you'll see something that looks very similar to this. And perhaps more decorative, when you go into many big uh, spaces, such as an airport, it'd be very, very common to see uh, roof trusses holding everything up to make vast spaces for uh, people and stores uh, in the airport terminal. So this is the Hamburg Airport. Uh, this is inside the San Francisco Airport. So again, we have a massive space inside where we want lots and lots of people. And so the truss is a very efficient way to hold things up.